There's something captivating about the puzzle boxes seen in films like Tomb Raider, Glass Onion, and even Hellraiser. Whether it's Laura Croft unraveling the secrets of an ancient artifact, a wealthy recluse extending cryptic invitations to a suspense-filled mystery, or a seemingly innocuous box unlocking a portal to a world of horror. These small, intricate puzzles have one thing in common. They hold the key to something bigger. I've been wanting to learn how they work and how to design and make one. So in this video, I take on the challenge of creating my own puzzle box. Introducing the Nexus Crypt. Ooh, mysterious. Hey, if you're interested in getting the files to make this box, I'll talk about that at the end of the video. The basic idea for a puzzle box is that it has a trick or combination of moves to open it. And there's generally a cavity inside where you can hide something. In mine, I've placed money. Okay, actually only $100. I told my kids if they can open it, they get the money. So they're pretty anxious to get their hands on it. But first, let's explore some basic mechanisms that can make a puzzle. This could be a set of interlocking gears, a series of levers, or a complex network of sliding panels. For this project, I'm gonna use a laser engraver to cut three millimeter base wood. Is it basswood or is it base wood? Basswood, yeah. Since this is my first venture into puzzle box design, I'm gonna focus on using sliding panels. Here's the basic idea with just two panels. Each panel is designed to slide along a track or groove that guides its movement. This panel acts as a locking pin and prevents the other panel from sliding. I'll fade out the guide to make it more clear. When the locking panel is moved to the correct position, it aligns the groove and allows the other panel to slide. You can stack this design so that each panel unlocks another one and multiple steps later, you can open the box. Here are five more quick ideas for puzzle box mechanisms. Turn a gear or wheel that, like a rack and pinion, slides a panel. Have a hole in a wheel that lets a panel slide when it lines up. Have multiple panels that all have to line up before a locked panel can slide. Here's a mean one. Have red herring parts that move but aren't used in the puzzle. And last, use metal pins, springs, or magnets. And there are a lot of things you can do with these. So this is the overall idea I'm going after. But my puzzle box is going to have a secret trick that'll make it impossible to open unless you know the trick. Hmm, what could it be? Okay, to get things started, I designed a simple one trick puzzle box. The idea was to get my feet wet with a box that would be fairly simple to design and assemble. But the truth was that even this box quickly became complex. It took hours to design and was a little tricky to assemble, but the result was pretty good. Okay, so how would you go about trying to solve this puzzle box? We know that it's laser cut, so that does give us some clues as to how it's assembled. This end is solid, but this end has a burnt edge. So that would lead me to believe that the lid can slide through this gap when it's unlocked. And the lid does wiggle a bit. There's also this little piece here, and it's on both sides. And it pushes in. In fact, it can slide back and forth. Slide it to the right position and the lid can open a little. And to open the box, you just have to keep moving that slider back and forth to the right place to open the lid more and more. In this way, it's like a combination lock or one of those 3D printed capsules. So, what's inside? What's in the box? Ah! Ugh, I hate spiders. So I did cut this small box with my Xtool D1 laser, but later I'll be showing you the Xtool P2, which is a game changer. The plans for this small box are available for free on my Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash Nerdtronic and it's in one of my free posts. The trick to this box is that the lid has a groove underneath. This is made by gluing the grooved piece to the bottom of the lid. That little lever can move back and forth and it has a key on top that fits in the groove. If it's aligned properly, the lid can slide open and you can make whatever unlock pattern you want. It's also important to note that any piece that's gonna slide needs a little extra gap so that it can move freely. So maybe a quarter or a half a millimeter wider on either side of whatever's moving. Another thing I've been fighting is that the wood is warping. I got this wood on Amazon and I think it's pretty good, but I live in the desert and it's very dry here. The way I dealt with that was to use a mister spray and a weight. Spray down the board, set it on a super flat surface, and put a weight on it. About an hour later, it's pretty straight. 
Okay, it's time to make the NexusCrypt puzzle box. So there are three files to engrave and cut. And this is the perfect opportunity to show off my new Xtool P2. And yes, Xtool did send this to me to use in my videos, but I really wanted it. It's a very professional piece of equipment. It has a 55 watt CO2 laser, which is insanely cool. I can use it in my house without poisoning my family. The smoke is sucked out of the chamber and through this smoke purifier, which filters the exhaust. But I think the biggest thing for me is that the onboard cameras make it easy to align my artwork to the material. And to me, that's huge. So of course, if you're interested in getting one of these, please check my description for an affiliate link. It is expensive, but if you're gonna do laser cutting and engraving as a business, I highly recommend it. Okay, all the parts are cut, let's put it together. I can tell you right now that from an assembly standpoint, this is advanced. What? That's not right. This is supposed to be there. Okay, so what happened was that I swapped two of the pieces and glued them in the wrong places. And this glue sets really fast. I tried to remove them and I snapped one of the spines off. Guess I have to start over. Okay, here's the box. I weathered it with a dark wash. Looks pretty good. Let's put that $100 in there and see if my kids can open it. I gave them each 30 minutes. If they can open it, they get the money. While some panels will wiggle, none of them will open easily. I even gave them some clues as to the types of things they could do. But the time ran out for each of them. I managed to keep my $100. Now I'm gonna show you the trick to opening the Nexus Crypt. But first, I have three quick things. Are you interested in getting the files to make your own Nexus Crypt puzzle box? Join my Patreon. The plans are posted there for the Backstage Plus tier and higher. And with them, you can make and sell your own puzzle boxes. Or if you don't have a laser engraver, I'm selling kits on my Etsy store. It has everything you need to make the box. Finally, I have a challenge for you. Today, I have 16 Twitter followers. 16. Let's see how quickly I can get to 500. Okay, here's the secret to opening the box. When you examine this box, you quickly realize there are a few pieces that wiggle and could be secret panels. There's a button here, which seems to connect to the opposite side. This end seems like it might slide up and down. The lid looks like it should be able to slide off, but it's blocked by this end. And finally, it's a little hard to find it because all these panels look the same, but this lower panel here is also a button. If we look logically at the order of things and work backwards, the lid can't open because this end is in the way, and this end can't slide down because this triangle is in the way. So to open the lid, this triangle needs to be pushed in and the end needs to slide down. That leaves the side panel button needing to be pushed in first, but it won't budge. The only clue on the box are these arrows. If we point the arrows up and tap the box down, that releases something internal and the buttons can be pushed in sequence. The trick is a mechanism inside that needs a good tap to release. If you tilt the box the other way, you'll hear a little click inside as it locks back in place. It's actually a small rod attached to a magnet. Here's how all the mechanisms work. Once the metal pin is disengaged, it unlocks the side button and it can push in. That unlocks the panel button and it can be pushed in. Then the end panel can slide down, and now the top can open. So, when you give the puzzle box a hard tap, the rod falls off the magnet. That unlocks the side button, push that in, push in the triangle button, and then slide the end down, and then the top can slide off. It's so simple. If you liked this video, please like this video and subscribe. Leave a comment, tell your friends. I do have more robot videos coming, and a nerdy video that's a contest between Roybot and an Atari 800 from 1983. What's that gonna be? Who will win? One more thing, are you hoping to miss out on my next video? 
Wait a minute. I mean, you probably are going to miss out on my next video. Only a fraction of subscribers ever find out about my new videos. So follow me on Twitter, then you'll know. Do it, do it now. Also, if you're wanting to make this box, Patreon. I post weekly content on Patreon, so go check it out.